Okay. Uh, so imagine getting punched in the face by a fist that comes at you at about 200 miles an hour. Okay. Now imagine that as you run into that. So odds are that's what it would feel like if you're driving and getting into an accident at about 35 miles an hour. So for those of you on the interstate, it's going to be way worse than uh, if you're driving in town. The faster you go, the worse it gets. So um, I know this will be in your book uh, later on, but airbags and all those safety devices are only intended to work if you combine them with wearing a seatbelt, plain and simple. So obviously I can't monitor when you get into the car every time to wear a seatbelt. I can only hope that you do. Um, so Claire, was that pretty easy? That's all it takes to get your points. Um, anyone else have an article to share? All right. Um, Check off one thing here. Noah, you're here now? Yeah. Okay. Um, Owen, did you come in here? Yeah. Okay. Just making sure I get all my checks off. Brendan, you made it in here? Luke? Yeah. Okay. Colin, I thought I saw you in here earlier. Did I miss you? Colin Vaughn? Yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure I don't miss you guys. Okay, and Brendan, you are here. I see you. Okay. Um, so hopefully everyone got a chance to read chapter one. Uh, so based on that information, uh, like I said, uh, I'm not going to sit here and teach you guys. Uh, I'm not going to lecture you because um, I know that's not what you want. Um, so especially with this face to face meeting, that's the last thing you want is to wake up at seven in the morning just to hear me lecture you. Um, I'll admit after yesterday at three hours of being the one who talks the most. I was exhausted by the time I actually got to work. So um, I really hope that doesn't have to be an everyday thing. Um, I hope it's more of, you know, me facilitating a conversation with you guys and answering questions that you have. So um, like I said, I'm not going to walk you through the chapter. I'm not going to hold your hands. Um, I, uh, I, can assume that you guys do the homework. Um, I can assume that you guys study and I assume that you guys can raise your own questions. So uh, basically after reading chapter one, uh, what I wanna do is I just wanna go over what questions you have about chapter one and I wanna go over concepts that you wanna talk about. Um, so basically that's what we'll do. Um, then we'll do a little review and then I'll have you guys take the test.
Okay, so feel free to unmute. Um, I will, I'll pull the chat up if anybody wants to ask a question there. Um, so basically, this is your opportunity to ask questions that you don't understand from the chapter or something that you want me to talk you guys through. I have a question. And I know you're ready to go. Yeah. Okay. So what does it mean by like, I'm on page 12 okay. and it says fertility rate. Like, what does that mean? What rate? Fertility. I don't know how to say it. F A T. Fatality. Fatality that. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> no, that's all right. That's important. Cause I will tell you right now, I'm not going to try to keep anything from you. That's a test question. <clears throat> fatality rate is uh, if there's a fatality, there's a death. So basically your fatality rate would be uh, sorry, I'm just gonna grab my book. And I just grabbed a regular textbook because I really don't want to have to try and thumb through my book, which is a giant binder. Okay, so Peyton, you said 12? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, like I said, this is in your book, or this is in the test. Um, so most drivers, in the United States don't start driving by themselves until they're 16. Um, so for every, mm, Um, for every age group in the teens, 16, 17, 18, 19, at all ages, 16-year-olds uh, have the ha highest fatality rate. Uh, trying to see how they figured that, because I'm looking at a number of drivers. Okay, um, but basically what the table reads is that uh, the higher number of the fat fat fatality rate um, is just meaning the chances of that age group dying in an accident. Um, and again, that has to do with a lot of different factors that they mentioned, uh, you know, beginners so when you're a beginner you're not experienced so handling and negotiating different things uh make it a lot harder for people to judge how things work um if there is something that comes up where you need to react um odds are i will probably be able to react and negotiate better than you um, and that's not saying that that's necessarily an age thing. It's just the fact that I've been driving longer than all of you have been alive. So I'm more used to that. Now, does that mean that it's a guarantee that I would handle it better than you? No. Um, but it's just the fact that I have more experience than you do. Um, and that's one of the unfortunate things for you guys is you guys don't have the experience, but the more hours that you put in with safe driving, the better experienced you're going to be when it comes time to handle something like that. Um, but that statistic is true that 16 year olds, according to the study, have the highest fatality rate. 
And it's, again, for a lot of different reasons. But to answer your simple question, Peyton, fatality means death. What else? And if you guys need a minute to look through your notes, I see some of you are looking down, kind of flipping through stuff. That's that's fine. That tells me you're doing the right thing. You're looking for a possible question. I have one. Yeah, go ahead, Charlie. Um, what does it mean if one out of 10 vehicles are involved in a crash every year? Um, basically what that means is if it's one out of 10, pick, yeah. 10, pick 10 of you in here. So there's, there's 10 students odds are, well, okay. Right now we have, let's round it up to 35. Yeah. According to statistics, at least three of you will be involved in an accident this year. That's just the way it goes. No. Um, you know, and say if we had 40 in here, now there's four of you. So it could be a situation where one of you gets into an accident this year um, or eight of you get into an accident this year. All right. I have another question. Yep, go ahead. I always thought that like when it came to your license, you just had a permit and then you're like restricted and then you're full. What's like the probationary or the provisional license? Because I never thought we had four. Or, like, uh, it's only three. Oh, well, it says, oh, maybe not. Um, oh, they're together. Yep, yeah, and that's where, and oh, I when, I, when I first read that, it does make it seem like it's four. Um, it is only three. Um, and for you guys, you probably think, well, we just have two because we have a permit and then we get our restricted license. You know, but for you guys thinking, well, I can drive by myself, so I'm good. There's only two. Um, when in fact you do have three, uh, the probationary period is the restricted. Um, so for you guys at around the age of 14 right now, uh, 14 to 16, most of you have your permit. Um, so that is phase one uh, of the GDL, the graduated driver's license. Um, but for you guys to move into phase two in South Dakota, you guys do that a lot quicker. Um, even with extending from three months to six months, that's still a lot quicker than I had. I had to wait two years in Iowa at 14, you can get your permit. And then at 16, you can get your license. Um, but still it was a graduated program because then uh at 18 is when you have your full license basically um whereas in south dakota it's 16. so at 14 it's the permit and once you get your restricted license your restriction only has to do with hours so does anyone know what your curfew is at age 14? Oh, Go ahead, Peyton. Is it you're restricted? 
Like, are you talking about your restricted one? Isn't it like 6 a.m. to like 10 p.m. or something like that? Uh, you're close, but you just have it backwards. Oh, tenants. Oh, really? You you are allowed you are allowed to drive from six in the morning till ten o'clock at night. You are not allowed to drive from ten o'clock at night until six o'clock in the morning. So when everyone says, "Oh yeah, I'm going to get my restricted license," that's what your restriction is. It's the hours that you can drive. Um, whereas you read in chapter one. Uh, some have passenger restrictions, uh, which I believe South Dakota was looking to do. I don't remember if they passed it or not. I don't think they did. Um, meaning that you can only have one person in the car that's not an adult or family member. Um, so you can't load up eight friends into your car. It's against the law. Um, South Dakota doesn't have that. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend that anyways uh just because friends in the car equals what crash distractions uh oh eventual crash um so the probation period um and restricted license are basically the same but there are three parts to it uh usually a permit then a restricted probation period, and then full license. And then for you guys, full license will um, be at 16. And that is a good question too, because that is also on your test. All right, what else do you got? Can you hear me? Yep, go ahead, Nick. So what does it mean by risk? It talks a lot about risk in this chapter. What does it mean? Okay, um, <clears throat> good question. Uh, <clears throat> risk is basically in using my words, risk is anything that will basically increase your danger, okay? Right now, all of you, your risk is pretty low. Why? You're in your house, your house is protected, um, you're not doing anything to endanger yourself, okay? Uh, for me, once I get done with my driver's ed, classes i'm gonna go up get showered change and i'm gonna go to work well as soon as i get into my truck to go to work my risk is going to increase can anyone tell me why yep you can die okay why could i why could i die jackson because you can get in a car crash Okay. Why would I get uh why would I get into a car crash? Um because like could happen. Okay. How? Can you give me an example? I'm running into another car or another object. Okay. And basically because I'm driving, right? So as soon as I get by go ahead, sorry. I say yeah. Okay. So as soon as I get behind the wheel, my wrist goes up. Mm -hmm. Okay. No matter what, um, what I decide to do in my vehicle depends on how my risk goes up. Uh, if there's a lot of traffic, my risk continues to go up. Um, I plan on taking the bypass, which is 65 miles an hour. Um, I plan on taking the interstate because that's how I have to get to work, uh, which is 65 miles an hour. So my risk goes up even more compared to when I'm driving on a residential street, which is only uh, 25 miles an hour. Okay, so with that, 
um, that's risk. Now, if I decide that while I'm driving, I'm going to mess with my radio, I'm going to check my text messages, my risk goes up even more. So the higher your risk, um, the higher your risky behavior, the more likely you are to get into an accident, the more likely you are to have something bad happen. Or I get into my truck, I drive the speed limit, my focus is on the driving task alone. Um, I don't worry about any other distractions. I am aware of other people um, on the road. I obey all laws. I obey all, tra I obey all, tra all traffic signs. Um, <clears throat> does my risk go up when I get behind the wheel? Absolutely. But I'm also minimizing that risk. So that's the big thing that they're going to keep talking about um, in this chapter and chapters to come is being able to minimize your risk. Um, because if you can keep your risk at a minimum, the safer you're going to be. Does that make sense? All right, what else you got? Okay, uh, I have a question. Yep. Um, okay, so I uh, was studying online and it had some stuff about HTS or the like the highway transportation system and I don't think I saw any of that when I was reading a chapter so I don't know if that's something that we need to know about or if it was just like maybe a different state and that's what I was studying from I don't know okay no that's all right um the highway transportation system is everywhere um let me double check to see I thought they have it in here. But let me just double check to make sure. Um, there are some videos, and I know the videos do talk about um, the highway transportation system. I was trying to work last night to um, get those videos loaded so you can watch them. Uh, I wasn't able to successfully do it last night, so I'm going to do it today. Um, hopefully I can get those on there so you can see them. Uh, the video does talk about highway transportation system. So in the HTS, uh, it's made up of three things, roadways. So your residential streets, your highways, your interstates, um, that's part of it. Um, the users and the vehicles themselves. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we have uh, road markings, road signs, um, just so everyone has the same communication as far as what to do. Um, and basically the uh, HTS is designed to get people from point A to point B as safe as possible. That's basically all you need to know for the highway transportation system. What else you got? Yep, go ahead, Peyton. Okay. Um, my other one is like, what is like the true meaning to like judge the level of risk? Because it said that, and like the major difference between new and experienced drivers is the ability to judge the level of risk. Yep. Um, so there's an infinite amount of situations that you could do. Um, so just imagine you're driving down North Shore, okay? Um, you see some kids playing basketball, okay? Um, kid shoots the basketball, hits the side of the rim, and the basketball starts heading towards the road. What are you thinking? That the kid is gonna chase out after it? 
Okay, so what are you automatically thinking about doing? Stopping or slowing down. Okay, you minimize the risk. Okay, some people might not pay attention to that as being an issue and may keep driving normally. And then if it does happen, they have to slam on their brakes right away. Um, now, experienced drivers may not do that as well because they're on their phone or they're having some other type of distraction. Um, and again, that's not a good way to minimize risk. Okay, so again, <clears throat> the biggest thing is, is when you encounter different things, the more experience you get as a driver, the better you are at handling uh, being able to judge those things is what it means. So right now, some of you have zero experience. So that is gonna be tougher for you. Um, and that's why going through this program, um, getting some experience driving, kind of talking about some different stuff, makes things better for you when you actually encounter it. Um, Cause right now you can't really tell yourself what you would do until you actually have it happen. All right, what else? All right, um, so <clears throat> next thing I need, I need your videos back on. Okay, I just need you to quickly show me your chapter one notes. All right, you can put them down, thank you. So like I said, um, and again, obviously I'm not gonna spend a lot of time looking to see whether or not you took legitimate notes, um, but again, that's only going to benefit you um, by taking notes because one of the other things I'm going to allow is you can use your notes on the test. I see some of you having a nice sigh of relief. Um, now, obviously I can't really, for some of you, if you are using your phone, um, I can't really monitor um, both as you take the test. Um, 
on your phone um, and also getting into Google Classroom. Um, so again, this is gonna be kind of on the honor system that you just use your notes, um, not using your book. Um, Cause here's the thing, I'm sure some of you have had an open book test before, agreed? Uh, anyone taking an open book test knowing they had an open book test and didn't study at all? And usually for those of you who have, it takes way longer to take the test because all you end up doing is try to look up the answers and you struggle finding the answers. Um, so trust me, it will be much easier if you just go through the chapter, take good notes, because then you know where those notes are, and then you can find those easy enough. And that'll help you. Because uh, to me, if you study enough, you're not going to have to worry about looking anything up. Most of the answers you can just answer on your own. And then a couple you may have to check to verify that you have the right answer. Okay. Um, so with that, um, any questions before you guys take the test? Okay, so what I'll have you guys do now is uh, go to Google Classroom and let me double check. I had it set for 7.30, so the test should be open now. Hey, Brendan, can you try using your uh, DV schools email to log in with that code? All right, so as you get into Google Classroom, um, are you, has anyone been able to open the test? Okay. Um, so I put every question on there as required. Um, that's just to help prevent you from submitting the test early. Um, so all it is is just enter your first name, enter your last name, uh, answer each of the questions. There is only one answer to each question. Um, and again, I'll just read the directions as I put them on there. Please make sure you read the question and answer the and answer each question with the best answer possible uh, some that's pretty easy where it's just true false um, but just make sure when you do have four choices just choose the best answer and once you submit um, you should be able to see your results right away um, So the only thing I ask you guys is just make sure you have your video on um, just so I can see that you're taking the test. Um, Haley, do you have a question? Yeah, I had to uh, request access to it. Okay, let me see if... Um, did you use a different email other than uh, DV schools? 
for Google Classroom, yes, but for the test, I used my school. I wonder if it's because you um, try try using the email that you use for Google Classroom um, and see if that works. Because right now, I think it's just not recognizing the two together. 